Hey everybody, it's Jason Collins. You are watching Chasing Homes and we are at Seiko 22 in Stone Mountain, Georgia. We're taking a look at some homes by Legacy Homes. We're gonna take a look at one of their flagship homes, guys. This is a 28 by 56. That's gonna give you about 1,380 square feet double wide. Let's pop in and take a look at this one. We're hanging out at the Seiko 22 in Stone Mountain with Legacy Homes. John's gonna give us the 50 cent tour on this one. Take a look at this though, guys. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the open concept floor plan. Oh my gosh, I really love the idea, John, that with today, with families all scattered around and people doing this and people doing that, that mom and dad can be fixing supper you know, Junior can be playing video games or watching television or whatever, and Susie can be hanging out doing her homework, and everybody's doing their own thing, and the family still remains connected just based on the way floor plans are, man. I, I'd like to see floor plans with no walls. No walls, that's what we need. And you guys are doing a great job with these open concepts. Give me a little tour. Tell me what we got going on here with this one. Thank you very much. So in this house, as you mentioned, it does have an open concept. One of the things that gives our homes a little bit more space is that we're stretched to the legal maximum width. So on a 16 foot wide house for 15 feet wall to wall, we have a vault that goes throughout the entire home, which gives it a little bit more space. You see the benefit of that a lot more in single lines. All of the wall boards are gonna be in vinyl on gypsum with batten strips. They're washable, they're easy to maintain. You can actually spray them down with bleach, they won't stain. All of the cabinets, our vinyl wrap and vacuum silk. We do a Euro style cabinet that's got a three quarter inch hidden hinge. It's heavier than, than standard wood. We're designed to take a beating. What we focus on is durability and lower maintenance for the consumer. In the kitchens, you're always going to have the option to have any appliance that you need. Let's go down here. We'll show a few more of the bathroom features. In every one of our bathrooms, you're going to actually have standard, a towel rack, a toilet paper holder. Again, we do the integrated backsplash. It's a residential feature. It gives it a good look. What we have found is that it also saves maintenance for the owner or whoever the end consumer is or if you're buying these homes and renting them out, you don't have to do a layer of caulk here. So any wet area especially, you want to prevent water from getting behind the cabinets and, and countertops. So what we've done here is create a residential feature that takes that layer of protection and doesn't leave it at the mercy of anybody that's in it. Um, water's not gonna be able to get above here. There's also gonna be medicine cabinets. And unlike a lot of the competition, instead of just doing some cabinets underneath the sink, we do three drawer banks. Now, if you notice in this bottom one, this drawer bank's a little bit bigger. That's not by accident. That's a design feature because you've gotta have a place to put blow dryer, hair straightener, your countertops are going to stay, stay clear. There's a place for the toothbrush, but then you can store anything you need. We also do a standard ABF plastic on all of our tubs and showers, but they're going to be 30 inches. A lot of times the one that you see are going to be 27. One of our owners is kind of a bigger guy, so we do a bigger tub or shower or tub shower combo. Let's go back here in the master bedroom. The concept that we apply in every single bedroom we call it the bed space dresser. So you need a minimum of 10 feet, three inches to be able to do this. So in this, you can see there's actually room you could do a full uh, queen or king size bed. If you did a queen size or less, you have an additional space where if you do put a step here. But there's always gonna be a place to put a TV on the wall in front of the bed. Now a lot of this is precognitive determines where our window placements are at. So if you turn around, you can tell this window is just slightly off center. And then you come back here, we want you to take a look right here and just see the size, estimate what the closet is, and then plug in how to look. It's probably a little bit bigger than what most people are expecting. That's what goes back to the width of our homes. When you're stretched to the legal maximum width, if you see a 1676, most of them are gonna be about 1,150 square feet. We're actually getting an additional 50 square feet out of that same box size with that width. Their walls are 14 feet, four inches inside wall to wall. The extra eight inches spread throughout the length of the home gives you 40 square feet, so you can do that in this case what we've done on this home, get a lot larger master closet. So if we go through here into the master bathroom,
you're going to see once again that we have the door banks, the medicine cabinets. When you have a his and her sink, there's a lot more space. The tub is slightly blocked off. There's a shower on the other side of this wall with the door that's going to come in. So what that does is that offers actually whoever your homeowners are, anyone that's coming in and using it, a lot of just additional privacy. Every one of the interior doors is going to have a floor mounted door stop. These are all standard features. And also above all of our sinks, we do what's called a Hollywood light fixture. A lot of times on an eight foot flat ceiling, you'll stick the light up right here. And if you're somebody that's looking in the mirror, if you're shaving, if somebody's putting on makeup or getting ready, you actually want the light to be coming down on your face. So what we've done is take a lot of these features with the homeowner in mind to make it as easy as possible. So most people don't really realize that when you're walking through a home with empty furniture, no electricity, you're not really thinking of where light placement is. You're not really thinking of how much storage space you have in the cabinets. We've went ahead and figured it all out. You just became my wife's best friend, John. When we travel, my wife is an Airbnb addict. And she goes on and she looks at two things. Does the bed look comfy? And is there a light over the mirror? If there's no light over the mirror, we, don't, we stay somewhere else. It's super important, especially women. I mean, she really will not stay in the place unless it's got lighting exactly like what you've described here. Absolutely. And that's just a feature that I think a lot of times, maybe because more guys are in STEM engineering, and let's face it, these things are done by engineers, right? So I think a lot of times guys don't necessarily think about that. And so that's a super neat option. And I'm glad you pointed that out because that's something that, that people need even when they don't know they need it. Absolutely. And when you're walking through a home, again, that's not hooked up to electricity or doesn't have any furniture in it, you're, you're really just kind of trying to get a feel for how many bedrooms and bathrooms you need. And just is it, is it gonna kind of be your basic, basic floor plan? It's just, what are the needs? We've actually gone to determine what bed size is every one of our beds, even in a single wide, the small single wide we build, you can put a twin bed in it and have that same bed space dresser. Now I'm glad you mentioned the engineering because what's not seen in a lot of our homes is we do a one piece American made cold roll steel icing underneath these homes. A lot of the competition will take three pieces and weld them together. The other thing that we do is a full length outrigger that's anchored into the floor joist. That helps the home travel better. And once you've actually set and installed it, it's going to prevent wall sagging over time. So sometimes if you're driving down the road and you see a house that's moving this way, it's because there's not a full length outrigger that's holding all those floor joists in. So there's a lot of construction features that go into it. Now those do save money. But what we've done is the way, the way that we find to save money are by turning all of our outlets sideways. Each one of these throughout the house, HUD requires one every eight feet. Every outlet's gonna be turned sideways. That saves us six inches of copper per outlet. So if you think of a commodity that changes price literally by the second, from the hours of, if we're at the East Coast time like we're at right now, 9.30 to four, it's changing price by the second. So those, those costs are able to, say, to be saved and passed on to consumer. But also the floor deck is underneath us, whether we do an OSB or a plywood, a lot of times what, what manufacturers tend to do is they just take perfect rectangular pieces, they lay them together and they put glue. Over time that glue is going to dry, it's an adhesive and it's going to break down. So when people talk about hearing floor squeaking, what that is is the glue itself is already broken down and it's just those pieces of wood that are rubbing up against each other. The joists that support the decking are 16 inches on center. Some of the competition actually does 19.2 inches. Again, they save money on lumber, but there's less support. If you think like a bed of nails where weight is distributed evenly by what supports it, that's what that, that shorter spacing does. But also on the decking itself, we use a tongue and groove. So there's a little bit of tolerance when it transports and rubs, but it keeps those, those components, and components and panels in place so that actually you're not gonna get floor sagging, you're not gonna get floor squeaking when you walk through it. So the last thing I wanna show you is, is out here again, we're gonna go back out into the kitchen. These bedrooms, if you look at them again, you, you can really tell. We've taken the window placement, and this one where it's gonna go is there's gonna be a bed right here. Also setting the outlets four inches off of the floor. It's a lot easier to plug in chargers and thank you components without them being blocked by furniture. But right here, we have a bed. There's going to be room there for a space. And this one, you can do a pull up to a queen bed space dresser. That wall's got a place for the TV to go on it. We never have furniture blocking or covering up a window. 
By the way, these drapes, these blinds, standard in all legacy houses. We do a silent rocker switch as opposed to, you know, the stick that sticks out that kind of gets a little bit cumbersome at times. And what that is is, again, just a residential feature that makes it a lot easier for someone. Once they move in, they don't really notice it. We, we try to make these turnkey so whenever a legacy builds a home for you, Again, if you're buying it, and once it is delivered, installed, hooked up to utilities, it's move-in ready. This house has a, has a pre-installed mini-split system, which has a SEER rating of 20, which is more efficient than any conventional HVAC system. What I like about it personally is that it's mounted on the back of the house. When we're just in the master bedroom, you can't hear a thing. Is this house comfortable enough temperature-wise for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a... We're, we've recovered a little bit from our southeastern U.S. blistering summer, but I mean, hey, it, it's Georgia, buddy, and it's going to be hot today. Absolutely, and here's the beauty of it. So we've got a thermostat here, and we've got a thermostat here. Why would you have two thermostats in a double wide? Whenever we use the mini split system, there's no crossover ducts that you have to use. We actually have a dual climate zone throughout this entire home. So if something were to come up on one side of it, they're both, these are two-ton mini splits, so it's enough to actually cool all 1,300 square feet of this house. You know, over the years, and I've been doing this since 2008, John, and one of the probably chief complaints that I see, especially on larger doubles, is that crossover. That crossover causes people problems because it's just a, it's just a place where air sometimes doesn't want to flow. So having that split system, that's, that's, that's awesome. Absolutely. Well, we build a lot of these in Texas, and it's the same thing. It gets 110 degrees. It stays there for about six months out of the year on the good years. They stay there for eight, so AC is of vital importance. And all of our kitchens, you notice there's just, there are just cabinets and drawer banks. You know, as far as the eye can see, there's plenty of storage. Yeah, we actually do overhead cabinets above microwaves. There's a vent built in underneath this. A lot of times people just kind of ignore that. But what's key about the vacuum seal, and the vinyl wrap that we do on these is whenever you're boiling water, if you use a paper wrap, what happens is you get the steam that's gonna come up and what that does, it's the same thing with the glue. It gets loosened over time and then you start getting all this peeling. Well, with these, they can't peel. There's no place for moisture to get in there. In between my hand and this actual cabinet, which is a high definition, you can see the texture, you can feel it. There's a clear layer of plastic and it's the same thing. You yes, you can. That's, that's textured just like it would be if it were wood. Absolutely. And my favorite feature in every legacy house, we talk about the end consumer and what we build for them. So if we look at this kitchen, and I'm thinking about it, and I'm going, okay, you know, I've got this great bar top. I can fit, you know, between five and six people here and with this horseshoe layout that we do. Actually, the person in seat one can talk to the person in seat five very comfortably. They can talk to the person in seat four. They can talk to you by seat three or seat two. But when you get into all of our kitchens, we walk around this, and I kind of wonder, where is the trash can going to go? Because we want to leave enough knee space under here. We've actually designed them at 37 inches to be hot, 37 inches in height, because bar stools only come in two sizes. So a kid can sit comfortably, actually, on his on here, and he's not reaching up. He's not sagging too low. If you're a grown person. A little bit taller, maybe about two inches. Your feet will touch the floor. You can sit comfortably. So you don't want to stick a trash can under here because this is where families gather. So what we do is we have hidden pantries. It's the same back and still, vinyl wrap on it. And this is the only cabinet in the entire home that's not finished out. We got a place for the trash can. Full size trash can. That's it. You can actually even go a little bit larger. Those are the legacy features that we do. That's we're taller, awesome. we're wider, and we're better than the competition. And we build houses that minimize maintenance for homeowners and people with park owners that buy them and rent them. And we make them as durable as can be. So if somebody's interested in finding out more about you guys, about your products and stuff, they can find you online, Facebook, what do you guys got going Absolutely. on? Absolutely. We use Instagram. We're also available at LegacyHousingUSA.com and LegacyHousingCorp.com if you have any questions or investor relations. It's a publicly traded company. We do have all of our filings up there for, for anyone in the public to see. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate the tour. You guys have got some awesome looking homes. We've got one more. Let me flip this around. Tell you guys what we got going on. We've got one more over here we're going to take a look at from Legacy. It's a 12 wide. We'll see if we can twist John's arm, see if he gives us such a great tour. 
We'll see if we can get him to do that. Hey, and by the way, if you guys like the content that you're seeing, you know the drill. Like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you know that when we are putting out content that you like, guys. Hey, this is Jason from ManufacturedHomes.com. We're chasing homes, and we'll see you next time.